Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter six is tossing coins for, for a dollar. All right, so for this assignment, you will create a game program using the coin class from Programming Challenge 16. Okay, so I don't know if you remember, but then we created a coin class in Programming Ch Challenge 16. The program should have three instances of the coin class, one representing a quarter, one representing a dime, and one representing a nickel. When the game begins, your starting balance is zero, zero dollars. During each round of the game, the program will toss the simulated coins. When a coin is tossed, the value, on, the value of the coin is added to your balance if it lands heads up. For example, if the quarter lands heads up, 25 cents is added to your balance. Nothing is added to your balance for coins that land tails up. The game is over when your balance reaches one dollar or more. If your balance is exactly one dollar, you win the game. Uh, you lose if your balance exceeds one dollar. Okay, so we're going to use the coin class we created in, in, in the previous program. And basically with this program, when it starts, it, it, it's going to kind of simulate throwing, um, throwing or tossing three coins. And if the coins um, land he head up, right? If it, if it lands head, um, heads up, right? Then we add, basically if, if, the, if the quarter coins la land heads up, we add 25 cents to the, to the balance. If the dime coins lands heads up, we add 10 cents and so on and so forth. And then as soon as the game uh, um, hits one dollar or more, the game ends. And then if your total balance is, or your starting balance is exactly one dollar, you win the game. If it's over one dollar, you lose the game. Okay, so it will make much more sense as we do it. But we need it, we need to start with, we need a coin class, okay, to work with. So let's go copy that coin class we created in the previous program and have it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the desktop in the folder over here and then go to the program we did, which is coin. Um, am I missing it? Chapter six, right? Okay, yeah, coin toss simulator over here. And over here, we can see we have a coin class here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the, the Java file. Just copy it. I'm going to create a folder in this one, a new folder, and call this, what's the name of this program? It's called Tossing Coins for Adults. I'll name it just that. Tossing Coins for a Dollar. It's a long name, but it's fine. <laughs> All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste the coin class in here. Okay, and then, well, I, I'm going to save this file also. I'm just going to go ahead and save this file in that folder I just created, which is tossing coins for a dollar. And I'll save it in here as um, tossing coins for a dollar. I know it's a long name, test. I know it's a long name, but it's fine. Tossing coins for a dollar test. Okay, um, dot Java. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and save it in the same location as the coin class. Let me go ahead and open the same folder and then open the, open the coin class so we can see it. So now we have the coin class and we have the tossing coins for a dollar test file. So that, so basically we're going to work with a class and, and this is going to serve as our program that's going to test the class. Um, but we, we went over, let me just uh, increase the font a bit here, just one second. So we went over the coin class in the previous program. And so if you want to understand the coin class well, you can go over that. But I'm just I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and go through it. So basically the coin class has one field side up, a method called toss. And what that what, what that method uh, uh, does is it's basically creates a random number, right? In the range of zero or one, zero to one, right? So this basically here, this method call is going to create a random number in the range of zero to one. Okay, so basically creating zero or one. The ending limit here is not included. Okay, it's, it's the upper limits, but it's not included. So if you create a random number, um, if you call the random the next int this way and you pass in two, you're basically creating a random number from zero to one. Two is the, is the upper limit, all right, but it's not included. If I type in, six this is going to create a random number in the range of zero to five okay so if we want zero or one we want to we want to make sure we type two and that's going to go ahead and create a um, random number from zero to one 
which is 0 or 1. And basically, if the random number is 0, we have tails. If it's 1, which, okay, so if it's not 0, then it's going to be 1, right? So that's why we have an else. So if it's 0, we have tails. If it's 1, we have heads. And this is going to be our, um, it's a method here, which is going to basically get the side up of the, of the coin. Okay, heads or, heads or tails. So it basically returns the value of the side up field. And, and the, this is the constructor, and the constructor basically calls the toss method, which does what we just went through. Okay, so now we're, we're to create a program that's going to use a class, and it's going to go out and create three instances of the class. One for quarter, one for diamond, one for nickel, I think. Yes. So first of all, let's go ahead and create the class for this program. So public class, I'm going to call it the same name as what I named the file. And I named the file as toys, uh, sorry, sorry, tossing coins for a dollar test. So that means I need to go ahead and save the file as tossing coins for a dollar test. Okay, so that's my class. And then I'm going to go ahead and create the main method. Okay. Okay. The, ind the indentation is actually um, I had to I had to re uh, reinstall this. So let me just change the indentation to four. Just one second here. This that should be somewhere here. It's it's hiding somewhere. I'll find it because it's two by default. Yeah, right here. Okay. So now it's good. All right. Okay. So, all right, we're, we're good now. Okay. So let's start with the first statement. Um, basically, what the question is saying first. This is because it's going over here. So, all right. All right. So for this assignment, you create a game program using the coin class from Programming Challenge 16. Now, the program should have three instances. Of the coin class, one representing a quarter, one representing a dime, and one representing a nickel. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and create the three instances of the coin class. We have the coin class, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to start with the name coin, and the first one I'm, I'm going to call it uh, quarter because that's what it's, it says you should call it. So quarter. Now, when you try to create something like this, right? It's it's equivalent to trying to create something like int number, right? Int is a type. And number is the name of the variable. You can think of this coin as a type, and you can think of the quota as the name of a variable. But when you try to create this kind of variable this way, okay, Java is going to know that this coin is not is not one of the Java uh, primitive data types. It's not an integer. It's not a, it's not a double. It's not a character. It's going to know that. So because so be, so because it knows that this is not a primitive data type, it's going to look in your folder to see that to see if the coin a coin class exists. Right, or if you don't have your class in the same folder and you have it somewhere else, you have to. Well, first of all, you have to go ahead and specify the path where the class is. So it's going to look. If you specify a path, it's going to look at that path to to see whether the class is there. If it finds it either in your folder or basically at whatever path you spe you you specified, it's going to say, "Okay, I, I get what you're trying to do over here. You're trying to create a variable, a class type variable that's going to refer or reference." Uh, the memory uh, uh, basically reference um, um, a coin object, okay. So now this is just created and reserved for a coin object. It's, go it's going to store a coin, the reference to a coin object. Now I'm going to go ahead and create that object in memory. So I'm going to use the new coin. I'm going to create a new coin object in memory here. Now let's see. In the constructor, we designed it in such a way that it doesn't accept any arguments. So we don't have to provide any arguments when we are creating the constructor. So it's going to create a new coin in memory, and the equal sign here is going to return the memory address of that object to quota. Now quota is going to refer to that object. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the same thing for the other ones. So paste it. Oops. <laughs> okay, so the first, well, let's call this quota over here. It's, we can see here it says one representing a quota, one representing a dime. And then one representing a nickel. So let's change this to a nickel too. Okay, so now we have our three objects. All right, three coin object. 
when the game begins, your starting balance is zero dollars, right? So let's go ahead and create a variable that's going to reference the starting balance, a variable that's going to store the starting balance. Okay, now let's make it a double, right? Because now once the starting balance changes, it can be a double value. It can be $25.2, $30.8. So let's define it, define it as a double. So I'm going to define a double. And I'm going to call it starting balance. Okay, starting balance. And let's set it initially to zero because that's what the program said. The program said we should, uh, our starting balance is zero dollars. During each round of the game, the program will toss the simulated coins. Uh, basically, so if we each run the game, the program will toss the simulated coins. All right. When a coin is tossed, the value of the coin is added to your balance. It's added to your balance if it lands heads up. For example, if the quarter lands heads up, 25 cents is added to your balance. Nothing is added to your balance for coins that land tails up. The game is over when your balance reaches $1 or more. Okay. So it says the game is over when your balance reaches $1 or more. Th that gives me an idea that this is going to be a loop until it reaches one dollar or more. So let's go ahead and create a loop here and say that while, okay, let's create a loop and say that while your starting balance, okay, because it says the game is over when your balance reaches one dollar or more. So while your starting balance is less than one dollar, well, basically less than one. Meaning, as long as it has, is as long as it's not greater than or equal to one, keep iterating, keep playing the game. As soon as it hits one or above, exit out of the loop. Okay, so this is what we've done here. We're saying, whilst your starting balance is less than one dollar, keep playing the game, and that's what the question is saying. And over it says that, for example, well, it gives an example. The it says when a coin is tossed, the value of the coin is added to your balance if it lands heads up. Okay, so. While you're playing the game, if the if the coins are tossed, well, first of all, it says the program will toss the simulated, simulated coins. It says during each run of the game, so meaning be, during each iteration, during each, each run of the game, the program will toss the simulated coins. All right. So once the once the, the loop starts iterating, each time or each run, it's basically going to toss the coins. Right. Now we know we have a toss method here in the class, so we can go ahead and call it on the object. So let's go ahead and toss all three coins. Each round it says we should go ahead and toss the simulated coins. So we can say quarter the, the toss, the toss this way. All right, that's, that's, what we are, that's all we are doing, we are quarter the toss. Let's do the same thing for the other ones. So quarter the to toss, and then we have dime the toss, and then nickel the toss. Okay, so we're done with those two. When a coin is tossed, the value of the coin is added to your balance if it lands heads up. Okay, so we have to check to see, now we've tossed them, we have to check to see what, what, what it landed up. I'm sorry, what it, what it landed on. And each object, each coin object has a side up field, which tells you the side that is up, okay? Either heads or tails, what side is up? It's saying if it lands heads up, Okay, heads up, meaning once it lands, if you see the heads, once if is, is a head on top of it, is the heads what you see? So if you see heads, okay, then we should add the value of the coin, okay, to our starting balance. So it says, for example, if the quarter lands heads up, 25 cents is added to your balance. Okay, so so we have a way to check to see if the coin ha um, landed heads up because we, we, can, we can basically get the side up of the field to see what side is up um, after tossing it. So I can use an if statement, right? Because in an if statement, once we put in, one second. If I say if quarter dot get side up, this method call is going to return the side up, okay, of this particular quarter uh, coin. All right, it's going to return the side up of it. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to print. It's just going to return the side up of this particular coin. Because once we call this get, get side up method, it returns the side up field of that particular um, object. So quarter, quarter get side up is going to return the side of the coin, right? So if what whatever is being returned 
from this method call is equivalent to, okay, it's double equal to. I'm checking to see if it's exactly, I mean, double equal to. Now we want to check and see if it's heads because it's only two values that are being returned, the words uh, tails or heads. If it lands heads, then that means it said it said that you know you should add the value to the starting balance only if it lands only if it lands heads up. So if heads is what's what's facing up right now, then we should go ahead and add the value to the starting balance. So if quarter dot get side up, which returns the setup of the quarter coin, if that value is equal is equivalent to heads. Now over here I'm using double equal sign to compare. If I use one equal sign, it's not enough. Okay, one equal sign is assigning what's on the right to what's on the left. Double equal sign is comparing what's on the right to what's on the left, checking to see if they are equal. So if quarter dot get side up is equivalent to heads, then what we want to do is we want to say that we want to add the value of a quarter to start and balance. It says if the quarter lands heads up, 25 cents is added to your balance, right? Now, 25 cents, we know that, let me just pull up a calculator here. 25 cents, we know that it's 0.25, right? But assuming you didn't know, right? Assuming you didn't know you wanted to calculate it. 25 cents is basically, 25 cents, right? It's basically 25 divided by 100, 25 out of 100, 100 um, uh, pennies, right? So uh, before, before I even go ahead and do this, let me go ahead and use ratio and proportion to explain, you know, how, how, I'm, how I'm going to do some of the calculation here. And I know that some of you know this, or even most of you. If I'm doing this just so it's clear to anyone who doesn't understand, or just so it's clear to everyone. 